I'm what I call a value shape painter. I'm really interested in the shapes and the colors. And if I can make the shapes and the colors correct in a subject, then it pulls together and you can find a recognizable form. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. Let's get started. So I've been recapping Portrait Artist of the Year on my YouTube channel, and I thought for a change of pace, I would paint my own portrait, uh, not of me, but <laughs> this is of my husband, just to show you um, one of the method that I use for portraiture. I, I actually use it for all my paintings, but specifically for portraiture, I think it's it works really strategically well. And the reason I'm doing this is because there have been, oh, I've watched two seasons of Portrait Artist of the Year so far, and I think there have been three watercolor painters, maybe at the most. And, and I think you learn a lot from watching people or from hearing how their process works. Now, there are a million different ways to work in watercolor, but this is, this is, a, this is what I like to do. The emphasis is on color, shapes, and value. So the first thing I do is I find uh, my, the whites of the paper that I know I want to leave white, and I've put Naples yellow in those spots. I don't use masking fluid, so you can see that. Now the next thing I do is I make a column of darks, mediums, and lights. And what I've done here is I've mixed ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and some burnt sienna in order to find the darkest spots that are happening in, in the face and, and in the neck. Now the next thing that I need to do, I have my darks established, I have my whites established. Now I need to find basically everything in between. So in order to do that, there's going to be a lot of information gathered in what I call the M or the middle column. What I kept doing there is making mixes with alizarin crimson, maybe some Naples yellow, maybe a touch of blue. But what I'm doing is I'm using the same colors that I started out with for the most part and mixing in what I would consider the next darkest shapes. So what I can't do is I can't have them be as dark as what was happening in the D column. And I don't want them to be as light as what's happening in the L column. I want to stay in the mediums. So that's why I'm using that value finder and putting it up there. When I look through the value finder, I can clearly see that, not, that these, this color that I've mixed is not as dark as what I put in so far. Now the next thing I do is I say, okay, now I need to go lighter, not as light as lights. I need to stay on my medium column, but I need to make another mix that is just tipped slightly lighter. So that's what I'm doing here. So I've added a little bit of orange to my mix because not only is it going to be whiter, uh, so I mean lighter, but it's also going to be warmer. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going over and looking, squinting my eyes and looking at the shapes, ignoring anything that's dark, Ignoring anything that's white because I've taken care of that. I don't unless I drive over them and Now I'm working on what I consider the second color that I see in the face or the second shape color that I see in the face and So far I haven't violated my rules so far all the M's uh, all the colors in the medium are medium Now the next thing I've done is I've added some more Naples yellow and some more uh, or orange in order to find the next lighter uh, color uh, shapes that I need to find. So that's what's happening here. It's warmer and it's also lighter. Now I put it in the L column, but it doesn't belong there. It's really one of the mediums. Well, arguably it's one of the mediums, but when I look at it through the value finder, it's definitely one step lighter than anything else I put in the mediums. Now there's still a lot of uh, space in, that I haven't attended to. So I have to think for a second and I'm not sure what I was doing here. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, I think what I did is just once again tip just a tiny bit lighter than what I had before. So it's as if you're moving up a staircase from darker colors to lighter colors and applying them according to the shapes that you see that are consistent. Now I go into the hair and I'm using the same kind of mixes that I did. I'm still sticking with uh, ultramarine blue. There's probably some alizarin crimson in there and Naples yellow in order to gray everything down and neutralize. 
and I made sure it was in the medium column because there's nothing that's dark in the color in the hair yet except for the darks that I put in at the beginning. So, so far I follow my plan really well. I've got my mediums distributed throughout my painting even though there are several mediums and there, there are four different uh, shades of medium, I've got the shapes correctly correlated. Now it's time to dry everything and I go back and it's time to address the darks again because now, because of the decisions that I've made since the very beginning, my darkest darks aren't popping the way I want them to. So I make a mix, which is probably alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and quite a bit of uh, burnt sienna in order to make those darks. Now I'm doing what I call color spots of value. What I'm doing is I'm going directly into cerulean blue and putting in some of those spots that I see that are, they're not as dark as my darkest darks. And I'm sorry, I put it in the medium column, but that's because I needed to see it next to those flesh tones. And if you look closely at the painting, you'd be able to see that cerulean blue suddenly makes an appearance. But it's really needed because otherwise the entire painting would be kind of um, rosy reds and oranges. And the other thing, and the reason for picking cerulean is not only do I see it or feel it, it's because um, cerulean blue is going to look really good against its complementary color. So when, a, when someone like this is completely or nearly almost orange-ish, uh, cerulean blue is such a nice complement to that. I probably would throw cerulean blue into the background would be my guess. I don't know what I would do in the background. I haven't thought about that. But I wanted to show you a sort of simplized way of looking at a figure and, and getting a, a likeness down in a fairly quick manner. So I hope that's helpful. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. If you have any questions about this or if you want to see it at a slower rate so it makes more sense, um, say so in the comments and then I'll know how to address that. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.